Hey guys, welcome back to Jibber Jab Reviews, and boy do I have a lot of exciting new details and information for you about the new Samsung smartwatch, and yes, it's finally official, it will be called the Galaxy Watch. It was unveiled at the Samsung Unpacked event in New York earlier today, and while the event was predominantly focused on the release of the Galaxy Note 9, there was about 15 minutes devoted to the launch of the Galaxy Watch. Now in this episode, I'm going to focus on the information just for the Galaxy Watch, but I will make another video about the Note 9, as well as another device that they unveiled. Okay, now going back to the Galaxy Watch, there actually wasn't a lot of specific information revealed in the presentation about it, so I'll provide you guys with a few points that I wrote down, and then I'll get into more exciting details that I was able to find online, which are the specs and the pricing. Okay, here are some of the highlights from the presentation. First, it's going to include a high resolution touch display, Gorilla Glass, and it will be water resistant for swimming. And based on the specs available, it's said to be water resistant to 164 feet, which compared to the S3's five feet rating, well, I would say that's a pretty significant improvement. In fact, the Galaxy Watch has the same water resistance level as the Gear Sport, and that was touted as the watch for swimmers, so the Galaxy Watch will certainly be able to hold its own in water. Okay, next Samsung said that the new device should last, and I quote, several days on a single charge. Now, if you recall, a previous rumor said it would last up to seven days, so it remains to be seen if that claim will be true, but I can tell you it does come with a larger battery, and I'll go into those details shortly. Okay, next up, Samsung said the watch will come packed with a number of new health-oriented features, such as 39 different workout modes and a heart rate monitoring system, which will allow you to build a baseline for a personal profile. So, for example, if it detects an increase in your heart rate, it will prompt you to relax. Now, this would be a really helpful feature for, say, when the in-laws spontaneously drop by. It will also track your fitness activities, and as I mentioned, you will be able to choose from a multitude of different fitness modes. It will also have advanced sleep tracking to monitor your sleep patterns and to basically let you know how well you're sleeping. And with the standalone LTE connectivity, it also means you can leave your phone at home but still be connected to everything you need, which means you'll still be able to make calls, receive messages, have access to maps, and of course, music. Now, as far as looks go, I think it's a combination of a Gear S2 Classic and the Gear S3, as I can definitely see design cues for both of them in it. Now, personally, I like the look. It definitely looks more like a watch than, say, the design of the Gear Sport. And with the added rose gold color, I think they're really trying to push it as much as a fashion accessory is just another piece of technology. Now, you could say that Samsung listened to their customers about how much they disliked the Gear Sport design, and that's why they decided to go with this enhanced S3 look. But you could also argue that they're actually playing it safe, and they really didn't want to take the risk and come up with a very different design from the S3 anyways. Whatever the reason, I do like the look of the new watch. Okay, and here are the detailed specs on it, which some of you may like and others may think, well, it kind of falls short of what it could have been. Now the bezel does look thinner than the S3, but if you look at the overall size, the Galaxy Watch is basically identical to the S3. The case thickness and width is exactly the same, and the Galaxy Watch actually weighs slightly more than the S3. However, before you freak out about the weight, I think the main reason it's heavier is because of the battery size, and you are getting a significant increase in power here. Now the one piece I was hoping for an increase in was storage capacity. It's still at only 4 gigabytes, and I think it would have been nice to see a bump here to at least 6 gigabytes. Also in the presentation, there was a lot of emphasis about how the watch will sync seamlessly with your everyday life, such as keeping track of your schedule and basically acting like a digital assistant whereby you can quickly scroll through all your events and reminders for the day. And of course, there was mention of Bixby and its new advanced functionality so that you'll be able to easily send messages, set reminders and alarms, all by using your voice. Now they actually had a very interactive demonstration of using the enhanced Bixby experience on the Note 9, and they actually referred to it as conversational Bixby, as it doesn't just copy your instructions, but it provides better results based on behavioral experiences. Very cool, yet kind of creepy. I'm not sure I want Bixby to think it knows what I'm thinking. 
Anyways, what this does mean for the Galaxy Watch though, is that if it's running Bixby, that also means Samsung is in fact staying with the Tizen operating system, so expect Tizen 4.0 to be preloaded on the device when it goes on sale. And speaking of going on sale, the Galaxy Watch will be available for purchase starting on August 24th, just like the Note 9, although you can pre-order the watch starting tomorrow. And since you can pre-order it on Friday, the pricing information shows the 46mm costing $350 and the smaller 42mm is set at $330. And the last piece that was mentioned at the unpacked event is that the watch can now be connected to your SmartThings enabled devices, which effectively means you will now be able to use your watch to also control functions in your smart home, which is pretty cool and it definitely fits in Samsung's vision of a seamless connection for all its devices. So what do you guys think about this new Galaxy Watch? Are the looks and the specs enough for you to upgrade or do you think it falls short of what you were expecting? And which size would you lean towards getting? The larger 46mm version or the smaller 42mm size? Let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get a hands-on demo of the smartwatch, perhaps at Best Buy if it is available. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I would really appreciate it if you could share this video and to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me keep the channel going so I can continue to offer you guys discounts, giveaways, and fresh content. And if you want to be notified when the newest video is just released, then just click on that bell icon next to the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.